Well, welcome over to the uh, Norfolk Broads Cottage Garden where we're going to show you today a really quick and easy way of popping up compost heaps which really is the most economical way of building lots of these if you've got the space to do so. These are pallets that we've scrounged from a local industrial estate. These are one of my favourite ones to get. They're the nice blue or red painted ones and if you just have a look at these first thing you notice is that they're not absolutely square. They do have a long side and a short side but the beauty of these painted pallets is the treatment is a preservative and they are made of pretty heavy robust wood so they weigh quite a bit but they are going to last an awful long time and they are so easy to build meter square or even wider compost heaps with these very very quickly they almost self-erect no additional materials are going to be required short of the pallets themselves and half a dozen four inch nails which will just hold the tops in place and they will last as good sized compost heaps in situ for around seven or eight years before the wood rots so they're long life really cheap no fancy plastics or any other environmental things that are going to cause these to be a problem to you and if you can get these pallets as opposed to the cheaper ones with lots more air holes between the wood they're going to be nice and easy for you to build and contain the compost really well and they will also last a long time. So let's show you how we go about constructing these into a compost heap. Now I've positioned the first two where I'm going to position this run of compost heaps. We're going to build a double bay compost heap using five of these pallets. And if I just show you the back position that we've put, the front side comes out and sits in front of the end corner here. These are just sitting on the ground now, there's nothing holding these together. But what I will do is pin these together by putting a nail in from this direction through this solid piece of pine into this block. And that will hold that back end on adequately. What I'm going to do now is bring the next section in and that is going to sit so it goes 50% on this pallet here and 50% on the additional back piece that I'm going to put in situ next. So let's bring the next two into position. No nails in these at all. As I say, these are so nice and robust, they just sit. Gravity will hold them there for the whole life of the compost heap. But I will just put the pins in the top so that they don't spring open. So let's put the next two in place. Right, so pallet two and pallet three are in position. You'll see we've got our first bay already defined. Now you're always going to have one side of the dividers with the wood showing and the other side with a complete panel. That doesn't matter, the complete panel's there. You're going to be putting a whole load of fibrous material and all sorts of things into these compost heaps. And because of the amount of air that comes into these, it's not going to be a super fast, quick composting system. This is compost that you're going to harvest over the next two to three years and let it have time to mature. And you're going to have to turn it periodically between the bays. So with this method, we're not going to put fronts on these immediately until we've got a good fill in the compost heaps. And then if we do want to put fronts on, like in this old one here, we'll tend to cut a pallet in half and just put a half front on to begin with until it really fills up and later just come in and when it's almost full, put a front on the compost heap, like on that corner one there that we've built, and then just fill in over the top but the beauty of not putting the front straight on is that you can wheel wheelbarrows and everything straight into the back of these heaps and start filling them up without having to lift stuff physically over these quite tall sides. So what I'm going to do now is pop some nails in to start holding these boards in place and then put the final section on this end and then we're all done. This is my first nail in, it's at around 60 degrees and we're just hammering that straight in. Simple as that, secure, not going anywhere. And I'm just going to repeat that into this position here. I may lift this one up just slightly so that the top looks nice and neat just by putting a little bit of soil under that corner. And then we'll put a nail through here and a nail through here. So this one is held in place against both of those two back pallets. And there we have the finished compost compartment. Two bays, both enormous, they'll take good loads of compost. These are such a good size that the heat in the centre of this compost is going to give you some good composting. Because of the air slats that you've got in all these sides, you are going to need to rotate the compost probably every six months 
to mix the stuff on the inside and the outside or ideally just shift it from one bay directly into the next which is empty and the ideal run of these would be a seven pallet combination giving you three bays so you had one you're filling one you are turning and one that you're using but that literally was constructed from those five pallets in under 10 minutes uh, there's four nails holding the whole thing together and the only cost really is the pallets and if you can't scrounge these for free then you're probably going to have to pay somebody on an industrial state between two and three pounds per pallet so all in you're looking at a three bay compost heap seven of these 14 to 15 quid with nails and i don't think anybody can supply you with a better more robust long-lived easy to construct compost heap than that that's going to make you some lovely compost we just keep on adding to them and adding to them because we're so lazy. I don't tend to turn the compost as often as I should do. If I had limited space, I'd probably be far more keen on actually getting in there and moving these compost bins around. But this is on a nature reserve, these runs, just on outside in the wildlife bit of our garden. And if I just show you over there, we're, we're onto the, the marshes here. And this is 1.35 acres, I think, that we just let run as a, a wilded nature reserve but the reason one of the reasons i don't turn the compost in here is because every year we get crops of grass snake eggs in them and the grass snakes just love making their nests in these compost heaps they love the heat the dryness during the summer months and if i start turning these compost heaps and working on them then i'm invariably upset by disrupting a nest of eggs which are just about to hatch or a in the process of maturing so we tend to leave the compost be until the winter months dig it out and then you've just got all the old skinny eggs left over but just look at this this stuff is been here for about four years now sign that it's ready to go on the garden is the fact that it's got a great crop of nettles growing in it as soon as stuff starts growing in the compost you know the nutrients are starting to be released and it's a good medium to grow so we're going to clean this off this has been a neglected gotta be fair it shouldn't be looking like this it should be a nice clean crop of compost but because it's been left so long it's seeded with nettles and i need to get all that off and then turn this and keep turning it for about six weeks so that anything that's in there germinates on the top surface and i can just bury that in once it's germinated basically deals with any seed that's been dropped into here so that's a job for the next five minutes clean this off get all the nettles out this one here we're filling I'm just going to show you these back pallet walls we built these about four years ago using the ply board versions of pallets thinking oh they're going to be far better because they don't let the air in and it's going to keep moist here and compost better but just look they don't last the ply board because it's constantly wet is starting to fall apart and um, my plan is to get more of the blue pallets and replace all these as we empty them out we've started replacing the walls with these new back, back ends here and this one is being filled with fallen apples lawn clippings and everything and we'll gradually replace those center sections with a new run of the blue ones which luckily i've got a ready supply of so that's a great way for you to look at constructing really good value robust compost heaps if you've got the land to do it in well, we said we had grass snakes regularly nesting in these compost heaps and I thought I'd just take the opportunity I've cleared the, the nettle off this mature compost just to show you what the grass snake eggs look like these are obviously very old they've been in this compost probably two or three years but you can see the little egg shape capsules they're not as calcified as chicken eggs or commercial eggs so they're quite sort of leathery the scales and the skins and these are eggs that have successfully hatched and all the little grass snakes have made their way out several years ago and you come across whole nests with 20 or 30 of these in just as you start digging through this mature compost what i'm going to do is break this up completely leave it open to the air for another couple of weeks come and turn it again see if there's too much in the way of seed in this that i suspect there will be because we haven't kept on top of the nettles that have started growing in this mature compost and it's still quite fibrous so it's going to benefit from being broken up and turned a little bit but then once this has darkened off and got nice and wet and moist and I'm confident that there's not a whole mass of seeds 
nettle seeds particularly that are going to germinate out of it we'll use this as a top dressing onto the borders so i'm just going to keep working on this getting right down to the bottom so i'm down to the top soil and then we'll just leave it as i say for a couple of weeks turn it again and keep doing so until it's not got any germination on the top layer right and there we go job done all turned over started to break it up nicely I'm just going to leave this now for a couple of weeks see how it goes and if you're looking at that in terms of well that's not much compost for a bin that size if it's been sitting there for four or five years to use well this hasn't this this is probably only about two years old this compost and I had taken some out before I abandoned it and let those nettles grow on it over the summer these compost heaps haven't had the attention that they would have done we've not spent as many days or weekends here at the cottage due to the movement restrictions so that's probably why it's got away from me when it wouldn't usually so that you would expect normally to have more compost in it than this it will compact down to around a third of its original or full size a bin but some of this has already been removed so you would normally expect a little more what I'm doing with all the nettle root and everything else now I'd normally say put that on a bonfire but because we're going to use a slow composting method here and we're going to get quite a bit of heat in it I'm just chucking everything into this bin and that leaves us with a lovely empty one that won't actually have anything put into it until we've filled and sealed the front of this one but as I say the beauty of having the fronts off is wheelbarrows just go straight in and you start piling it up on the back and moving it around you've got such good access if you do want to put a front across this in the early stages all I'd recommend would be a run of chicken wire just held on with a couple of nails that's easily to take on and take off when you want access but also allows you to see what's going on in the compost heap and turn it regularly but as I say we don't put any fronts on these until they are probably six tenths full and starting to spill out over the front and that's the stage that you'd start putting a little bit of frontage on.